Hey, this is Paulo from Trivium. You're watching pitcam.tv. Awesome. So, um, what would you say is the biggest show you've ever been to as a fan? Biggest show I've ever been to as a fan? Or maybe not big, just like the one that made the strongest impression on you. Oh, um, I'm trying to think here. I think, I mean, honestly, the show we played a few days ago with Metallica at Rock'em Ring, that was a pretty pretty big show, not only to be playing it, but uh, I believe that was the last time the festival was going to be at that site. Oh, and, nice. you know, getting to see Metallica be the last band to play there, yeah. see the last song played there by them, that was a, a real special moment. and Just one of the many moments, I guess, that we've been lucky to be a part of. Yeah. What's your all-time favorite album? Uh, Master of Puppets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Easy one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, childhood, what's your favorite childhood memory? Um, probably when when I got my first bass. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, that was, was a big moment for me. I could have never foreseen it getting this far, but it was just nice to have something to work at, something that I could do with my friends. Mm. You know, that's how it all started. It was just playing music, playing cover songs, and then just became serious. Everything else sort of faded into the background. Mm. You know, as a kid, you start you start off wanting to do everything and then you sort of find the things you're you're better at and the things you like the most and you kind of stick with it and thankfully I stuck with it and yeah. haven't looked back. So when you were a kid before you got into music, what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, I mean the usual, like fire, fireman, astronaut, <laughs> all that. That's when what I got, most people say. When I got to like high school, um, I think the thing that kind of piqued my interest, aside from music, was some sort of engineering. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure if I would have liked it as much once yeah. I got into school, but that was kind of where I was going. It was sort of like I wanted to do music, but that was the practical uh, route to go. Like a solution, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, I don't want to say a backup. Um, it was just kind of, that's what I was going to be doing. And then... Um, you know, I went out on the tour with Trivium just pretty much to fill in and yeah. they asked me to join and here I am. So which person do you admire the most in the whole world? In the whole world? The whole uh, world. Anyone. Definitely my parents. I think yeah. they they both have a lot of qualities that I've tried to uh, tried to have myself, you know, just, you know, my dad coming from Italy, coming to America. Yeah you know, starting as a waiter and now owning his own business. And, um, and my mom's always just been a very hard worker and has always pushed me, even though mm. I'd get mad a lot <laughs> when she would push me to do things. But uh, both both of them have really, you know, helped shape me, turned me into who I am. And they're definitely the ones that I've always looked up to the most. Are you still in contact with the family in, in Italy? Uh, yeah, I have pretty much an entire side of my family over there. Uh, Sometimes when we play there, they'll come out to shows, which is always nice. My grandma's seen us a few times there, so that's really an amazing thing. What'd you think? Uh, she liked it. I think she just thought it was great uh, seeing her grandson mm. up there playing music. I'm not sure if she's into heavy heavy metal, but um, <laughs> it, was, it was really funny to see her on stage watching us. Speaking Italian? Uh, no, unfortunately, my dad never taught me. Oh. He uh, wasn't patient enough. <laughs> Okay, so if you could donate a lot of money to any uh, charity, which one would that be? Um, I mean, anytime I've ever donated money to charities, it's usually in times of disaster. I mean, that's when money is most needed. I mean, obviously, anytime you can donate to different things like uh, maybe childhood abuse, things like that, I mean, that's definitely a worthwhile cause. It really comes down to whatever... You're just something that maybe moves you like mm. that. You know, I definitely given some money, like I said, anytime there's like a disaster, like the tsunami in Japan, stuff like that. Mm. I mean, it's, especially if it's a reputable um, charity like the Red Cross or something, mm. that would definitely be the one I would go with. Mm. Do you ever think about how much influence you have as a band and what you, you care about and what you talk about, how that influences the band? Um, definitely. Um, the message through our lyrics, through our music, um, the way we carry ourselves means a lot to people. And you know, you hear stories about how the music's helped save people, and 
that's a big responsibility and that's why you know we take it serious and we don't you can't take it lightly when people are being affected like that because it can be the opposite you know they can be taking a bad message away from your band or that you know I don't want to get into what those messages could be I just feel like we focus on the positive side of things and try to empower people to be better themselves and and you know stick to that stick to the right path in life don't go the wrong way mm. okay so now the childhood one uh, what was your favorite subject at school um definitely history oh, yeah? uh, I just always gravitated towards it um Definitely, I liked physics, I liked math, but I think history was just the most fun for me. And that's one thing I've always liked with touring Europe is now I get to see all the things that I loved reading about yeah. in school. And I can at least have a basic understanding of a lot of things. And it, mm. that's always been a fun thing coming here. You always find something new that you're like, oh, I read about that when I was younger. Mm. Do you do anything particular in particular to collect memories in a way, like taking photos and, or, and creating an album or blogging or anything? I know that Matt blogs. Uh, what about you? Um, I mean, Instagram has made that pretty easy, yeah. you know. Everything's stored. I'm sure the NSA has all my records, <laughs> so if I ever need anything, I'll hit them up. Um, I do. I did blog a little bit. It's, it's kind of tough. I'd like to write more. I really enjoy writing. Mm -hmm. um, it just... I don't know, I have to be inspired to do it. Same with music. It, I find it really tedious to, to have to write every couple days uh, a journal entry. If, if I don't feel like writing, I don't want to write. Yeah. But when I do feel like writing, I enjoy it. It's an outlet. So sometimes I do. And I also write a column for Bass Guitar Magazine in the UK, which, yeah. is, oh, okay. which is nice. You know, I can not only talk about the music and the bass playing side of it, but just maybe the personal side of being in a band, which is always nice to write about. Traveling as much as you guys do, does it change your perspective like on the world, on where you're from, yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we live, not to, not that we're biased, but I, th I feel like the U.S. is a great place to live. Yeah. Uh, it's made me really appreciate not only the country, but living in Florida. Um, I mean, anytime I see people complaining and, you know, seeing some of the stuff we've seen around the world, I mean, you travel to countries like Indonesia and you see people living in yeah. cargo containers down by a river, you know, it's really hard to complain about our lives. Um, so it's definitely helped make us, I guess, a bit more worldly and to respect yeah. other people's cultures and have a different outlook on things than people that just kind of stay in their, their area. And so that, that's been a really nice thing for us. Which places would you say uh, have made the strongest impression on you guys when traveling? Um, definitely Japan has been one of them. I really love the culture there. Uh, Matt has a lot of family that still lives there as well. So we've always been really, I don't know, we've always had a really great bond with the country, with the fans there. Um, I just really love going there and we're actually going back later this year and I'm hoping to have, it's only one show but I'm hoping to have like a maybe a week there before so I can really kind of get out and explore a little bit more. Yeah. I guess having him in the band has sort of helped you get to know the country better than you would have if he yeah, wasn't in definitely. Uh, you know, when I was staying up at Matt's, I was staying up at Matt's parents' house, um, when I first joined the band, his, his mom is from Japan, so yeah. she'd make a lot of good food, and so that was sort of the, the first introduction to... Uh, you know, some Japanese culture before we actually went over and uh, got to, you know, experience Japan firsthand in the country. And we've loved going there ever since, I think it was 2005 was our first time there. Mm. So how about the shows? Are there any shows that have stood out more than others throughout your career? Yeah, I mean, now it seems like every festival we play is just phenomenal. But definitely when we played t Download in 2005, Vakin 2011, um, played OzFest, the entire tour of OzFest 2005. I mean, those are definitely kind of milestones for us as, as a band. We, mm. Every time we did festivals or shows like that, we seemed to reach a new, uh, a new peak. So also, I got to say, Loud Park this last year was, was one of those as well. So we just keep, keep rolling. And, you know, the longer you stay around, the more those types of shows happen. Mm. So we've been very, very fortunate to have them. I know you just did uh, Rock am Ring. What was that like? That was crazy. I think, uh, I believe it's Rock am Park. It was yeah. a little bit crazier. Okay. Like, in terms of 
kids moshing and going crazier, okay. but the other one was much, much bigger. Yeah. And um, you could definitely tell it was a very new audience yeah. for us, which is great. I mean, I know a lot of bands, you know, when you go out there, you want to see everyone going crazy for you and stuff. But to me, it's like a challenge. You know, you're trying to win these people over with mm -hmm. your music. Mm -hmm. It's a clean slate. It's a first impression. So I... I enjoy that. It makes you work a lot harder, and you have to really, yeah. you know, go out of your way to win these people over. Mm. So, what do you guys have coming up uh, after this tour? We have Mayhem in the oh, States yeah. uh, with Avenged Sevenfold, Corn, Asking Alexandria. Uh, I believe Suicide Silence, Miss May I are also on it as well. Okay. So, uh, got a couple of our touring mates here <laughs> yeah. today. But um, it's going to be great. It's one of the, if not it. It's pretty much the only real metal festival in the summer, uh, like like big bigger metal festival, and just really looking forward to it. It's always a good time. The people that run the festival, uh, John Reese, who's the the main dude, he's a great guy. Everyone that works with him and works with Mayhem is amazing, and they always make the summer so much fun for all the bands out there. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Especially on Valentine's Day. Yep. Yep. Just a. Uh an ocean across. <laughs> so I guess maybe um, the first question, do you have any Valentine's tattoos related? Like maybe something from your mom or your girlfriend or? Uh, no, no, no Valentine's related tattoos or anything. I do have my wedding band tattoo. Uh, it's a Japanese Enzo tattoo. Um, there's maybe almost a hundred different kind of definitions of, of what the Enzo is, but um, I just love that there were so many multi-interpretable things about it. Yeah, so I have that instead of a wedding ring now. It's a little oh, safer for yeah, exactly. all my hobbies like guitar and jujitsu and all that stuff. So it's a little bit safer. Do you have a favorite one? A favorite tattoo? Um, it's kind of tricky. I only have three. My right arm, my left arm, and this. My first one is this. Um, it's a dragon. It's it's based on the Ascending Dragon by Kitagawa Utamaro. It was a piece, um, late 1800s Japanese piece. It was by an artist who traditionally did a lot of geisha paintings. But when I saw, he had a piece called The Ascending Dragon when we were about to have an album called Ascendancy come out. And I knew I wanted to stick to Japanese tattoos being half Japanese. It kind of all fell into place.